Welcome to the new discussions on statistics and this is about constructing frequency distribution table. This is the table that usually statisticians use whenever they are dealing with very large sample size. A frequency distribution table is a collection of observations produced by sorting them into classes and showing their frequency occurrences in each class. This is what the complete frequency distribution table looks like. First column would be for class limits, followed by class real limits, class midpoints, tally, frequency, and cumulative frequencies. Each will be discussed by the following steps. Step 1. Decide on the number of classes. Second step, find the range, and that is being identified by this formula, R equals highest minus lowest datum. Third step, find the class interval, which is being identified also by this formula, range divided by n, which is the number of classes, found in your step 1. Step 4, select a starting point. Now, usually, starting point is the lowest datum, and you use the CI or class interval for you to get the next classes. Fifth step, Represent each score by a tally. Sixth, count the frequency of each class. Lastly, find the cumulative frequency. Let's have this example set of data in constructing frequency table. A researcher conducted a study on the ages of, of persons with diabetes. The following data were obtained for the ages of a sample of 40 diabetics. Construct a group data using the information below. And these are the ages of 40 diabetics. Based from the first step, you have to decide on the number of classes. There is no certain rule in deciding number of classes. However, some researchers would, would randomly choose classes from 5 to 20. Now others would get the square root of the sample size. Now, in this case, I would use the square root of the sample size. With a given sample size of 40, we all know that the square root of 40 falls between 6 and 7. Here's the thing. You go with the lower number so that in case of excess data in tallying, you can adjust into the next number. In some cases, class, it would exceed to your chosen number of classes. Here, there are cases, so for example, I chose here 6. There are cases that it would exceed to 6. And that's why we have to go with the lower number for us to have, for us to adjust the number of classes. Which means if you decided with 6, um, the table must consist of 6 classes only. Second step, get the range by getting the difference of highest datum and lowest datum. Here, the highest is 83 and your lowest is 10. Therefore, the range here is 73. Third step, get the class interval. We get the class interval by dividing the range in step 2 by the number of classes in step 1. Now, Warning, there are two reminders here in step 3. One is to round this off always to whole number and it must be odd. With this situation class, we all know that 73 divided by 6 would give us 12.17. Applying the restrictions here, this must be 13 to satisfy the two conditions that it must be odd and whole number. Remember, you don't go down, okay? We all know that 12, since the rule is it, it should be odd, you don't go down to 11, but you go up. So instead of 11, you choose class B, 13, because that is um, odd. Again, you don't go down. That's the rule. In fourth step, this is the part where you start filling out your table. Select a starting point. Usually, it is the lowest datum. With this given data, starting point would be 
10 since that is the lowest. Applying the class interval, which is 13, the first class must be 10 to, what do you think? It must be 22. So, the first class would be 10 to 22 since the interval is 13. Okay? Including class 10 and 22 in counting of um, your class interval. So, um, using the interval again, which is 13, your next class will start with 23. Adding or using the class interval, it will be 23 to 35. Next, we ended with 35, so the next class would start with 36. So using class interval from 36 to 48. Next, 49 to 61. Next, starting from 62 to 74. Then, last class would be 75 to 87. By the way, when will you stop in um, coming up with your class? When you reach class the highest um, datum. In this case, uh, the given data set has highest score, highest age of 80. So, we'll stop with 75 to 87. Notice here that we have here six classes. So, that matches our step one um, chosen number. Now, the first numbers here are called lower limits and the second numbers are called upper limits. In fifth step, class real limits column is like class limits but with decimals. The rule here is subtract 0.5 from lower limits. So if we have 10 in the first class, so 10 minus 0.5, we will start with 9.5. And the rule here in upper limits would be addition of 0.5. Comparing class to lower limits, we subtract here in upper limits, we add 0 0.5. So, applying this rule, it will be now. The first class would be 9.5 to 22 plus 0 0.5 would be 22.5. So, the first class would be 9.5 to 22.5. Now, in second real limits, we all know. 23 minus 0 0.5 is 22.5, then 35 plus 0 0.5 would be 35.5. So this will be 22.5 to 35.5. Apply the same rule class with, with the other classes. Now this time, first numbers here are what we call lower real limits, and the second numbers here are called upper real limits. Next column. Class midpoints. From the word itself, midpoint, you will get the midpoint of each class by adding the class limits and divided by 2. That is the usual formula class. That is the usual formula to identify midpoint. So for our first class, you just add 10 and 22, and that gives us 32, and divided by 2, that will be a midpoint of 16. Second class, add 23 and 35 divided by 2, then it will be 29. Next, 36 plus 48 divided by 2, you get 42. Look at the pattern. From 16 became 29. From 29, it became 42. Um, Can you see a pattern here? From 16 to 29, that's 13. From 29 to 42, that's also 13, which happens to be also our class interval, which is 13. So that's the pattern. So you just add class 13 to the last number to get the next class midpoints. So from 42, the next number would be this, and this, and this. For our next column, this is the most time-consuming part in the table. 
you will tally all the data one by one which class they fall. Example, for first class, you will tally all the entries that fall from 10 to 22. Now, we all know that we have here three data. And those are 10, 21, and 18, which is encircled um, in red circles. So here, to tally first class, it would be 3. Next class, from 23 to 35, there are 4, encircled by blue. Next, from 36 to 48, there are 13, encircled in green. From 49 to 61, there are 8 encircled in violet. From, 40, from 62 to 74, there are 4 encircled in yellow. And lastly, from 75 to 87, there are 8. So that's how you tally. You, of course, tally one by one which class they fall. Now, for your frequency column, you just count the tally. Okay, so for first class, we have here 3, second class, we have 4, third class, we have 13, fourth class, we have 8, fifth class, 4, sixth class, we have 8. Then you have to make use of the symbol sigma f to denote the sum of the frequency. This somehow gives you idea if you have correct frequency, if you ended up with the total sum of sample size. So meaning to say, class, if I'm going to add these numbers, that must be equal to 40 since the sample size here is 40 diabetics. For the last column, we'll divide this into two parts. First part for the less cumulative frequency and the second part is for the greater cumulative frequency. To come up with the first less cumulative frequency, the very first thing you have to do is to copy the first frequency which in this case, we have here 3. The rule here is to add the number to the next frequency. So from 3, we will add this to the next frequency, which happens to be 4. So 3 plus 4 would be 7. So that's your next cumulative frequency. Now do the same thing. You add 7 to the next frequency, and that would give us 20. Then 20 plus the next frequency would be 28. And then add this to the next frequency, we'll have 32. Then 32 plus the last frequency will have 40. Now, you know you're doing the right thing if you ended up with the sample size. Since we ended up with 40, we are in the right path. Again, your last number must be your sample size. Lastly, to come up with your greater cumulative frequency, this time the rule here is we subtract with the same frequency. And this time, our starting point would be your sample size. So we begin with 40, minus 3 is 37, and that is our next cumulative frequency. Again, 40 minus 3 is 37. In less cumulative frequency, we are adding diagonally. In less com in greater cumulative frequency, we are subtracting class in the same frequency. So 40 minus 3 is 37. Next, subtract again 37 with the same frequency column. So this will be 37 minus 4 is 33. Then 33 minus 13 is 20. 20 minus 8 is 12. Lastly, 12 minus 4 is 8. Here, you know you are correct if you ended up with the same frequency of the last class. So that is how you construct complete frequency distribution table. And of course, you have to come up with the title of the table. You always label it as table 1 since this is the first table in our statistics discussion. Begin the title with the type which is Table 1 Frequency Distribution Table to be followed by the data in the given.